Hello everyone, it's Justine. Today I'm going to make a really pretty card using the Gerber Daisy and Ladybug die. Now I'm not going to use the Ladybug, just the Gerber Daisy. And this is from Susan Tierney Cockburn's collection that's brand new for January and it's called The Painter's Garden and it is just so pretty to see all these beautiful flowers. She will have the pansy, the Carolina Allspice, the Xenia, Bird of Paradise, Gerber Daisy, and Ladybug. That's this one. And of course the bamboo trellis. Now if you haven't caught it yet, I did put out a video with the Bird of Paradise cards and with the Bird of Paradise die and I love it. I think it is so pretty. I used my Copic markers, colored it up, and really made some really pretty cards. So I now am going to work with the Gerber Daisy and I also am going to be using Susan's it's called the Susan's Garden Ultimate Toolkit. So I will just pop on the screen what it all comes with, just a picture from the website. But what I am most excited about is these balls that are attached to attachments that go into the tool-in-one. And you do receive a tool-in-one with the garden kit. So that's awesome. But I really think that the balls are perfect for adding dimension to the flowers and this foam pad has just been perfect you can see already that my flower is kind of coming to life here but i will show you how i use all of it in just a minute but i did a little bit of prepping for the video not to mention also we have the reverse tweezers from spellbinders i think i like these even better than the other ones that i had and you know, if you've watched any of my videos, these are my tried and true reverse tweezers. And let's see, these are from EK Tools, which I mean, they're one of my favorite tools is my reverse tweezers here. And now I have one and you can see that they're slightly different. This one from EK is bent and the one from Spellbinders is straight. So it will give me just another tool to have in my toolbox. So. I'm really thankful that now I have a new reverse tweezers and you already know I love my first one so this is going to be wonderful. So regarding the Gerber Daisy, I used the die to cut out all of the flower pieces so you can see there's pink paper and green paper that I used. So for the pink paper I used the large flower petals, the medium flower petals, and the smaller ones. Then for the inside of the flower, which I will add in just a couple minutes here, I used this die that they're almost little stars if you can see up close, but they make the texture for the inside of the flower. And then of course we have the little ladybug you can see there. I'm not going to use this on this project today, but now I have a ladybug in my collection, so that's wonderful. Now, I also used this die for the leaves. So the dies simply cut out the paper, and I kind of helped them come to life just a little bit by adding some marker on the paper with some Copic markers, which I think is such a fun way to make things look a little more realistic and not just be flat. So let's start making this flat paper come to life. And again, I'm using the toolkit. So for a leaf, I would like it to look realistic. And we know that leaves are not always flat, especially on flowers. They almost seem to have a point where they go down and then they kind of raise up again. So to get that look, I'm going to take the big ball and I'm going to just hold the top of the leaf and I'm just going to press going up toward the tip and it just kind of be going in a fan motion just around. And I'm not using a ton of pressure, but I am pressing, you know, this is foam, so it, it's kind of helping curve the paper. So that's giving me kind of the look that I was going for. Then to get the leaf to curve the other direction to go down. 
I'm going to flip the leaf over like so and I'm going to do the same motion just going the opposite direction so I'm going to start from the center of the leaf going toward the tip like that and I find that the big ball is a little easier to get that pretty dramatic shape with then using the other ones, I do keep the other ball, there's the medium one, I keep that right in this tool in one so I have it on hand. And then I also keep this one which I call the curved horn, just right there. I don't use that one very often but the large and the small ball are what I use the most. So I have those right on my tool in one so I am ready to go. So moving on to the big I think this is the second biggest flower petal. To create more of a realistic look, I did add just a light pink to the flower petals to kind of show the vines. And to add even more vines, I'm going to use this small ball here. And I'm going to start from the center and just put maybe two or three lines on each petal. And just by doing that, it's creating that vein, I think I said vine before, but I meant vein, the veins of the petals and it just kind of helps it look a little more realistic. And if you're not interested in doing all of this rounding and shaping to your flowers, you could use this die and have it be flat and it would look just fine as it is. But I think it's kind of fun to add the, the dimension. Now that I've done all the lines on the petals, I'm gonna take that big ball again, put it in the center, and I'm just going to make little circles, kind of going around, and you'll see my flower is gonna start rotating with my circles. And I really want to get it to be quite a dramatic change. So <laughs> I'm going to just keep going and have it be, I mean, that's about an inch and a half of dimension maybe an inch, about an inch. <laughs> Thank goodness for my grids here. Then I'm going to do something similar here for the smaller ones, just not as dramatic since this is going to be, since these are going in the center. Just a little rounding. And you can see how quick that goes when you're not chatting. <laughs> so I'm going to put that off to the side and I'm going to now put this flower on my card base. So just to mention my card base is an A2 size card which is at four and a quarter by five and a half. I use the gold mirrored cardstock to kind of line my background here and then I used the embossing folder from January that was the 3D embossing club folder and I think that was sold out <laughs> which was kind of fun to see because I have not been part of something on Spellbinders that has completely sold out, well I guess the advent calendar, but it was kind of fun to see something like that sell out because this is an awesome 3D folder and I know a lot of people have it because it was sold out, but I love that it creates this little area in the center for something like this to nest and you don't have to have crazy background paper or pattern paper to really make a fun background. Just regular cardstock with that 3D embossing folder and it is so gorgeous. And you guys just wait until you see February's 3D embossing folder. I love it. So if you are a 3D embossing folder person or a, th a embossing person in general, get ready for February. Anyway, to assemble my flower, I'm going to put a kind of large area of glue down in the middle and put my back piece of my flower on and just kind of lightly press. Yes, there's some glue poking out the sides, but once I assemble my flower, no one will ever see it. Then I'm going to put my second large piece down. And oh, I forgot to mention that on these dies themselves, they actually tell you how many to make. They say 2x, as in you need two of these. And for the medium one, 2x, you need two of the mediums. So 
I think that's just a really clever and kind way that um, Susan and Spellbinders has made this whole process. It just makes it easier. It takes the guesswork out of it a little bit. So now when I'm putting the second one down, I'm not going to put it right on top of the old one so it lines up. I'm just going to offset it a little bit so it fills in the gaps. And I'm already using my reverse tweezers, which is so fun to have a new tool. So I'll do the same thing with the next smallest piece, a little more glue, and I will offset this again so it's not matching up with the last set of petals, just like that. Making flowers like this has really started to make me miss spring, so <laughs> I'm looking forward to spring. I don't know if you've noticed, but I'm, I'm here from Minnesota, <laughs> and it's been an interesting winter, to say the least. We've had a lot of snow. It's been very, very cold a little earlier this year and in December, and I'm ready for spring. We'll just put it that way. Now we have the next largest piece, which is, I guess, the third piece. And I have a couple of those. I'll just put that down. I think I have three of those. And with all of these layers, it really makes a beautiful flower. I think that some of these flowers would be so pretty for Mother's Day. A stunning card with a handwritten little note in the inside. You really can't go wrong. Okay, now for the last piece to go in the center, besides the little brown pieces. In general, the assembly for this is very fast, just glue and stick. Once you have all the pieces cut and kind of dimensioned up, it's pretty quick here. Okay, let's figure out the leaves leaf placement, if you will. I think I want it to be kind of diagonal, so I think two of those over there. I have decided to use all four leaves, and I know it kind of breaks what I typically do, which I, I typically use the odds rule, where I use odd numbers for either embellishments or little butterflies or things, but I think the four leaves look really nice, so I'm just going to go with that. And when I'm adding the glue, I'm not putting any glue at all on the ends of the leaves, kind of like how I left all of the tips of the flower petals here. They have no glue, all the glue is just in the center. Help my flower and overall look of this be a little more realistic and hopefully have this flower come to life. I already like these reverse tweezers because they have that long needle nose and I can just shove that in there, gently of course, and press down without using my finger, which is kind of nice. Okay, for the center, I'm going to take a minute and flip over my centers just so when I am ready to go with my jewel picker, which I'm going to use in a minute, I will have all of the sides going the right direction. Well, I added a little glue to the center, but then I realized I wanted to add dimension to these pieces as well. So I'm going to use my tiny ball again and just press right into the center very carefully. And that will kind of make this star shape be more like a flower, which is perfect going to act as my inside flower piece. Okay, luckily my glue has not dried. Hooray. And I think I'm not even going to use my 
gem picker. I'm going to use my reverse tweezers from my little toolkit from Susan. I may have to add more glue. We will see. I'm not going to use all of my centers because I am satisfied with the way that the flower looks as it is. So again, I thought about using this hello. Now, I think that would look really pretty on this card, although I almost want to leave it as it is because I think that having something like this on hand in my card stash would be very helpful because again, this could be a Mother's Day card, but this also could be a really beautiful birthday card for someone or even a sympathy card. So I'm not going to add a sentiment to this one, which is a little bit different than what I typically do, but I don't think that I will be regretting that. And if I would like to add a sentiment in the future, I can always add something on the bottom or kind of resting over here or even stamp a sentiment in the inside. But this little hello sentiment, if you're curious, is from the Showered with Love collection and I am loving that as well. So I will use this little hello, just maybe not on this project. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video all the way to the end. I would love to know what is your favorite flower. This one is the Gerber Daisy and I hope you enjoyed it. Go ahead and hit the like button on this video if you have liked the video. If you are a subscriber, thank you so much. And if you didn't know already, there is a little bell icon. And if you click the bell icon when you subscribe, it will actually send you a notification when I post a video. So you won't miss any videos from me in the future. So I highly recommend that. Okay. <laughs> I know I said I was finished with this card, but I was looking over at my little basket here as I was finishing the video and I thought maybe Nouveau Drops would be a beautiful addition to this card and I think that they are. So I used the White Blizzard Nouveau Drops to add on this card. So <laughs> I hope you like my little addition here and anyway we'll see you in my next video. Bye!